What's up developers and welcome back to a new course where we will be diving into Laravel 9. If you want to help the channel out with the content that I create, now head down to Patreon where you get benefits just as a private Discord group where other developers can help you out with your coding issues. If you are interested to join, the link to Patreon can be found in the description down below. I've created a Laravel 8 course of 34 episodes somewhere between one and one and a half year ago where I dived into beginner's topics of Laravel. That was early in my YouTube career. I've reached a point now where explaining topics got a lot easier to me and since my Laravel videos did so good, I decided to create a new course which will go way more in depth on important topics. If you are interested in my previous course, I will link the video in the description down below. I won't refer to my previous Laravel videos during this course since it will be more in depth and I just want to start over, with better explanations and examples. In the time we're living in right now, frameworks pretty much took over. Beforehand, developers were responsible for not only writing the actual code, but also the business logic of applications. Topics such as input validation, user authentication, database access, and so on were developed by the user itself. Technology is growing rapidly. We're starting off with a Laravel 9 course, and at the time we finished this course, Laravel 9.5 probably already came out. Now what is Laravel? Laravel is an open source PHP framework, which in my opinion, it's very easy to understand once you have a good base of procedural and object-oriented PHP. It follows one of the most known design patterns, which is the Model View Controller Framework, so MVC. Now why should you use a framework? Frameworks such as Laravel, Symfony and CodeIgniter are built on loads of packages that are already developed by other developers. But most importantly, they are also maintained by other developers. With the use of a framework, you don't need to think about configuration files, server providers, or pre-described directory structures. Over the last two years since I've started my channel, I've seen a lot of comments from developers saying that I'll build it in plain PHP, why should I use a framework? And in all honesty, most companies that need a new website or platform probably won't pay the full price of you creating a complete new system from scratch. Most e-commerces or PHP agencies use some kind of framework where they build upon, I usually respond to people that it depends on what you want to achieve. Do you want to be a freelancer? Go with PHP and build a framework from scratch if you want to. Do you want to work for an agency? Chances are that you'll probably never build a PHP framework from scratch. If we just think about frameworks in general, most developers will say that the increase of speed compared to a normal language is the biggest advantage. At its own core, Laravel is all about equipping and enabling developers. Their goal is to provide clear, simple, and beautiful code and features that help developers quickly to learn, start, and develop. Next to speed, Laravel's goal is to make developers happy. That's pretty weird coming from a framework, so let me elaborate on that. Laravel's main focus is their learning curve. Once you understand PHP, it's super easy to adjust to Laravel. It has built their framework in a way that most of the standard or common tasks such as database interactions, authentication and emailing are made simpler by their own components. Laravel's third main focus is convention over configuration, meaning that Laravel's default configuration will bring you quite far since you don't need to redefine configurations. Finally, simplicity. If we think about some advanced topics in PHP such as dependency injection, mocking, data mapper patterns and common query responsibilities, Laravel focuses on the simplest possible implementation of that. Think about a global function, using facades, active records and so on. These are all topics we will be covering in this course. Some of you guys might have been familiar with Laravel 8 and some of you might not. On the 8th of February in 2022, Laravel released their 9th version. A lot of developers think that so many changes have been made, but most of the changes were implemented in minor and major patches from Laravel 8. So let's talk about some of the biggest improvements that came out with Laravel 9. First off, their PHP version. Laravel 8 supports a minimum PHP version of 7.3, while Laravel 9 supports a minimum PHP version of 8.0. This is pretty important to know, since Laravel 9 will be using the newest Symfony 6 framework, while Symfony 6 requires PHP 8. It's a small triangle between Laravel, Symfony, and PHP. Laravel 8, and even previous versions, allowed developers to use the PHP artisan route list command inside the CLI. This command shows users the existing routes in the application, with its associated HTTP method. If you have a lot of routes defined inside your application, it would have got pretty messy inside the controller. At the moment, you'll see a pretty clear overview with the HTTP method, the endpoint, the named route, and the associated controller. 
Finally, Laravel supports anonymous stop migration right now. When you created multiple migrations with the same class name in Laravel 8 when trying to recreate your database, you would run into some issues. Since Laravel 8.3.7, it allows you to create anonymous class migration files. And since Laravel 9, it's been implemented as a default behavior. Now this was it for this video where we talked about what Laravel is, what it does and how it works. And finally, we talked about some new features that have been added in Laravel 9. If you do like my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.